Hey, good evening everybody. It's Casey the Rockstar Flipper. That would be me and this is video number two for Saturday night, November the 12th, 2016. It's very late tonight. It's after midnight. It's actually close to one in the morning. Um, so you guys probably won't see this until Sunday. I will have another video tomorrow slash today, Sunday. But this is just my second video I promised everybody um, for Saturday. So we're going to jump into it because I did a video earlier on how to find the best yard sales. I'm going to do a video now on tips and tricks for making the most money at yard sales. Um, and I've got the top 10 uh, things that you should always remember, the tips and tricks, hints, and strategies for um, you know making the most of yard sales, making the most money, finding the best items, finding the best yard sales, etc., etc. So we're going to jump right into it. And uh, we're going to start with number one, which is before the yard sale. Um, the night before uh, or a couple days leading up to you got to plan a route um, in my last video which if you haven't seen I'll link below uh, I gave a great set of websites and a great app uh, mobile app uh, which there are several others you can find for locating yard sales so the night before you need to um, plan a route around your area and if you can find community yard sales they are the best absolutely find community yard sales now you don't have to stick to the route. You can definitely deviate. If you're driving along from spot, you know, from location A to B to C and you find something in between, stop at that as well. Trying to get um, the most out of your day, make the most of your time and get to as many yard sales, garage sales as you can. So definitely plan a route and deviate from the route if you find something worth deviating. But then once you're done deviating, jump back onto your route and you'll be right back along the route that you planned the night before. So that is tip number one is plan a route. Now, while we're on the topic of the night before, make sure you go to the ATM or go to the bank or whatever it is you need to do and get exact change. That is tip number two, get exact change. Uh, exact change would be quarters, $1 single bills, $5, $10, and 20s. Don't go to yard sales with a $100 bill. Don't go to yard sales um, trying to buy a item that's priced at 10 bucks and you offer five and then you hand them a $10 bill. Have exact change. Have lots of ones, lots of quarters, lots of fives. That's typically what you'll need. I usually carry a couple 20s, couple 10s, like six or eight fives and like 20 ones. And then, you know, I'll have three or $4 worth of quarters in my pocket or in the center console of the car, whatever it is. So step number two, tip number two for the night before is get exact coin and exact change dollar bills to make sure you are prepared to purchase correctly and make deals the following day when you're out yard sailing and garage sailing. Okay, so number three is the morning of. You want to go early. When you're planning your route, get the times. Most yard sales start at either 7 or 8 a.m. Make sure you are at those yard sales at 7 or at 8. Don't get there all early. A lot of people hate early birds. Sometimes you can get deals, but don't leave your house at 8 and get to the yard sale at 8.30 or 8.20. You've already missed 10 items. You've already missed a ton of people already there. Be there on time early. A little bit, a couple minutes is fine, but don't get there, you know, a 7 a.m. yard sale. Don't get there at 6.15. I, I hate when people do it. A lot of people hate when people do it, but be there early, but early on time, if you know what I mean, if that makes sense. So um, tip number three, definitely schedule it, wake up, set an alarm, and get there on time or a couple minutes early. Okay, so tip number Four on the list of top 10 tips for yard selling and garage selling is to not be afraid to research and look prices up. Now I get this question so much on my YouTube channel. I get it so much on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. People always asking me, um, should I use my phone and look up an item that I'm looking to buy? You know, my yard sale people, they got this cool microphone. I want to check it out. I want to see what it's worth. Should I do it in front of them? And my answer is always no. But my answer is always also yes. So what is the best tip for looking items up? So what I will do is, and I'm gonna show you guys, let's just say I'm interested in buying this candle from one of my yard sales. I don't know what this candle is worth, but I think it's worth some good money, so I wanna look it up. Well, one option is to look it up in front of the, you know, right there in front of the person. I don't recommend that. Some people get offended by it. I've, asked, I've had people literally ask me to leave because I'm a reseller. Probably not the best idea. Now, some people say that if they just tell the people what they're doing, they're okay with it. I don't think that's the best idea either. Here's what I recommend doing. Pick up the item, check it out. If you think it's worth money, you need to look it up. 
go hand it to the person having the yard sale. Politely hand it to them and say, hello, I'm interested in this candle. I'd like to continue shopping and looking at the items you have. Do you mind holding on to this for me? They will hold on to it. Make a mental note of everything about it that you need to look up. Hand it to the person. They're going to hold on to it. Go back to the yard sale, back to their table, and quickly look it up. If it's a good deal, if it's a good price, or you're going to make a deal, make an offer on it, go back to them when you're ready to check out, when you're done with everything else. If it's a bad deal, simply go back and tell them, on second thought, I think I'm going to let this stay. I'll pass on this. I'll be happy to put it back out on your table for you. Done. I think that's the most polite way to do it, and that's what I have done many, many, many times, unless the person is open about me reselling, but that's the way I get through it, and that's my answer for anybody that wants to ask, should you look up items um, when you're out researching? But that is tip number four on how to research items at yard sales, is make sure you do research items. Don't just pass on them because you're too scared to look them up, or to hand it to the person so you can look it up. Tip number four. Okay, strategy number four five when you're at yard sales is to always start low if you see an item priced at 10 bucks and you want to buy it for five or six dollars do not offer the customer five or six dollars they're going to come back at you at eight or nine you're going to end up settling at seven or eight bucks offer them three or four bucks if they get offended the worst they can do is say no and you just say okay i appreciate that then you can say what would you take for it or you can say well you know i could you know instead of three bucks i can come up to five always start low don't Shoot yourself in the foot from the time you start the negotiation. Key to negotiating is start low. That's tip number five. Start low, work your way up to your price. Do not start a couple of dollars under their price and get worked up higher. Start lower, you'll get better deals, always. Tip number five, start the negotiation low. In other words, lowball them. We're buyers, we're resellers, we're trying to make money here, guys. Which leads me into tip number six. Some people don't even make offers. I don't understand. The worst somebody can do is say no. If they've got an item for $5 and you offer three and they say no, you get it for five bucks and you made a profit anyways. If you offer three and they take it, you win. You get to make extra profit. So always make an offer. Tip number six, I, don't, I can't tell you how many people don't make offers. They just buy everything at full price and leave. Now if an item's 50 cents or a quarter, probably not going to negotiate that, but you know what I mean, guys. If it's a reasonably priced item and you think you can get it a little lower, even though it's profitable, negotiate the price and get it lower. Always negotiate, always make an offer if you can, if it's reasonable and if it makes sense. Don't, you know, don't insult them and don't make offers on 50 cent items, but always make an offer on anything else that you can. So that's tip number six, make offers. Okay, we will jump on to number seven. Tip number seven would be bundling. Bundling is something that you guys are probably very familiar with, and that means finding your item for $10 and the other item for, we'll take our candle again. We got a $10 candle. We want to pay six bucks for this one. And we've got a $10 candle that we think we can pay four for. We go to them and we say, well, or that we think we can pay, let's say we can pay eight for it. We go to them and we say, hey, you got two candles. I'll give you, I'll give you 12 bucks a piece for it. And they say, no, nah, I really wanted 20. You know, can you do, can you do 15? And you'd be like, okay, I can give you 14. Maybe you get a deal on it. Or maybe you pay the 15, you take them for 15, you make a deal. Whatever the case might be, bundling items almost always guarantees that you're going to get a lesser price on each item. So that's a good way to start the negotiation and offer. Um, when people are selling multiple items, they're more than likely going to give you a deal on buying multiple items. So make sure you bundle. That's tip number seven. Bundling works very, very, very well. I try to buy at least two or three items from every sale. If I'm gonna buy one, I'll find something else. If you can't find something else, then work tip number six and individually negotiate. But that's tip number seven, bundle items if you can. All right, my strategy number eight for getting the most out of your yard sale and garage sale time is all about time. Stay out as late as possible. Stay out till one, stay out till two. If you see people still out with garage sales, it's a perfect time to get deals. It means they're getting ready to close up, they're getting ready to clean their merchandise, and they're going to take it back inside the house. They don't want to do that. They want to sell stuff. So you will get stuff for almost any price that you name. Walk up, find deals, name price, and walk away with it. Stay out late. The later you find a yard sale, the better the price you're going to get. Now, it's a problem because some people have already packed up, but you will still see people that are out with their yard sale. Also, when you're making your route, 
make notes of the ones that are open till two or open till three. Make notes of the times that people are saying they're closing up and you can plan your route accordingly or you can go back to the ones that are open late. But the later you stay out, the better chance you will find a deal on something that got passed over. So that is tip number eight, stay out late. All right, so tip number nine, we're getting close to the end here, guys. Number nine is to go back for leftovers once yard sales are closed and people are putting stuff away. If you hit a yard sale early, let them know that you'll be willing to come back and buy them out if they have a lot of good stuff. It's a great way to buy bulk merchandise. It's a great way to get a great deal on stuff because think about it. You're buying a whole bunch of stuff that was already cheap. You're going to get a great deal by offering 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Now, this works best if you have a big SUV or a truck or something available to haul stuff. But be prepared to buy the stuff right away and take it away and make you know a great deal on a whole bunch of merchandise for 50 or 100 or 150 bucks to bring home and bulk it. Um, I... I lived and died on buying out yard sales for a long time. Back in the day when I needed to make three or four thousand bucks a month, um, I was still living in a little tiny apartment, trying to pay you know a thousand dollars rent and a five hundred dollar car payment and five hundred dollars for electric and water and all that. You know, I was trying to make four thousand dollars a month. I would go around to yard sales and spend a hundred here and a hundred there and fifty there. I'd spend three or four hundred dollars. I wouldn't even go to yard sales to buy individual items back in the day, which was a mistake. I should have been doing it anyways, but I went around at the end of the day around one o'clock and I would buy people out. I would email people and message people off the websites that had yard sales that day and ask them what they had left. They'd send pictures. I'd go up. I'd offer 60 bucks, 80 bucks. I'd buy it. I would fill the Hummer that I had and I would literally come home with hundreds of things. Kate used to kill me. She hated it, but I would buy tons and tons of stuff and come home and have spent two or 300 bucks and we'd have inventory for days. So it was super good. And I usually turn that inventory into three or four times my money. I could spend 300 and turn it into 1,000, 1,500 quick. I lived and died off of buying out yard and garage sales. But make sure you offer low. It goes back to the same, you know, offering them low. Start low, buy everything. Trust me, they'll give it to you cheap because they don't want to put it back in their garage. So that's tip number nine. If you can, buy out yard and garage sales. Buy them out. All right, guys, we've made it to number 10, the top 10, number 10 tip strategy and trick to making the most money at yard sales have business cards made business cards the reason when you leave a yard sale whether you buy them out you don't buy them out whether you bought one item or you bought no items leave them a business card and on the back of that business card have a list of all the things you're interested in and let them know that the next time they have things for sale to contact you you may be able to buy that merchandise before it even goes out for a yard sale next time or the next time they have a yard sale, you can tell them, just let me know after you're done and you'll get that first opportunity to buy them out again, just like we spoke about. So having business cards or, you know, if you have a business card where you're a video game buyer, you hand them that card and anytime they come across video games, they may call you. But to go have a couple thousand business cards made for 50 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever it's going to cost you to hand out every weekend at yard sales is priceless because eventually your phone will start ringing. It might take a week, it might take a couple weeks, but you'll start getting calls and getting offers of merchandise. And when people start bringing merchandise to you or bringing the opportunity to you and you don't have to go hunting for it, it saves a ton of time and it allows you to buy a lot of merchandise. It's actually something I'm thinking about getting back into um, because buying merchandise in bulk is something I have to do to save my time. And then it's super good way to, to source and to get really good deals. It also helps you learn because when you're buying a lot of stuff, you're getting stuff you normally wouldn't touch or wouldn't look at, but you're being forced to sell it because it came as part of your bulk lot. So something to think about, guys. I know it's getting to be winter and you guys up north are not going to have a chance at this stuff, but let me flip the script on you and see if this works out for you. Imagine if you can email everybody and give them business cards during the, sp during the spring and summer and early fall, and then come winter time, they want to get rid of stuff, but it's not conducive with the weather to have a yard sale. You're in Minnesota, you're in Connecticut, you're in wherever. So, well, instead of being able to set up a yard sale, they've got your business card and they say, hey, that guy Rockstar Flipper, man, he buys stuff. I should contact him directly even though I can't have a yard sale. Now you are a step ahead of the competition. So that's a huge secret I don't give anybody, but I hope that works for you guys. I hope it helps you. And I hope these 10 tips and tricks for buying and selling at yard sales and garage sales helps you make more money, along with the video from earlier today if you haven't checked it out. 
It's down in the description below. It's all about how to locate good garage and yard sales. It's all about the mobile app and the website. So check that video out if you have not already. Uh, I appreciate you guys joining me on both videos today. I know it's very late, so make sure you watch this tomorrow morning on Sunday. And uh, please like the video if you liked it. Please smash that like button. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, you're eligible for giveaways when we do the giveaways, which will be at 25, 20 or 25,000 subscribers. I haven't decided yet. But um, we'll be back with another video tomorrow. I have a super, super good video for you guys tomorrow on Sunday. It'll be late Sunday night when I get it up. But uh, enjoy this video. Enjoy the other video that I will link below. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And go make some money, y'all.